Good morning friends. Um, today I'm going to talk about uh, lumbar plexus block. Uh, first thing is uh, going through the uh, landmarks and uh, what you can see on the screen is the landmarks. What we have done is we have marked the spine uh, with the dots. Those are the uh, spine. We mark the posterior leg spine. Okay, so that forms the first line. And the second line goes through the posterior leg spine, which is parallel to the first line. Then we take a two fierce line, okay, which crosses these two lines. And the distance between the first and second is divided into medial two third and lateral one third. And a point mm -hmm. just below that or above that will be our mark where we'll go with the uh, needle for the uh, spine, uh, for doing the uh, lumbar plexus. So what you're going to see is that it's going at that point. It's uh, about a centimeter uh, below that. Uh, we usually take either 80 or 100 millimeter needle. And like I have explained before, the aim is to hit the transverse process. Okay, so you can't. And try to hit the transverse process. And then walk off it cranially or caudally. Uh, wherever you feel it, it's easier to actually walk off. So that's hitting the transverse process at around 80 centimeters, sorry, 80 millimeters uh, or 8 centimeters. And then you start trying to walk off the thing and try to see the cordyceps response, which is actually seen here. And then you start reducing the current. Okay, it goes down pretty quickly on that. Okay. At point five, you can still see the response, and then you inject the local anesthetic. There you go. Okay, good, good response. You can see the cordyceps uh, response here and you let go the needle and you still get the response okay. you can always do final adjustment uh, if the needle is too much in or too much out you can actually uh, bring it up okay so what's the most important uh, thing in lumbar plexus block to make it safe is uh, one thing always uh, use your landmarks okay and uh, let's go back okay so always uh, mark them out mark them out okay and the spine is not always straight and again the uh, groove you see at the back doesn't always correspond to the spine okay so like this patient has got this spine which is a little bit crooked so you mark out the spine put the dots so i can draw a line on that uh, mark the posterior spine which is not the easiest landmark to find so uh, that's the other one but two fuse line is actually uh, easy to mark as you do for your uh, lumbar uh, lumbar puncture or subacnoid block and then it's uh, one third and two thirds so lateral one third middle two third and go a centimeter either below and above and the reason why I say it above or below is because the your two fierce line can be pretty high some patients actually have a high pelvis and in that case your two fierce lines might be at L1 L2 and if you then try to actually go at that higher up you will be stimulating l1 or l2 you will never get the lumbar response the uh, cordyceps response you are looking for so if you don't get a response at higher up you see a higher pelvis what all you need to do is actually just uh, go a little lower down and uh, then uh, try it again uh, like I said the distance from the skin puncture to the transverse process varies it will depend on the uh, patients uh, built 
in uh, lean patients uh, you can find it anywhere from four centimeters to five centimeters but in big patients i've actually had to actually introduce whole of my needles around almost 10 centimeters and uh, then but once you hit the transverse process the distance from the transverse process to the nerve that is that is no more than 18 to 20 millimeters that is around two centimeters from that and if you're not getting a twitch okay you need to again reassess your uh, landmarks now if the patient has got uh, a kyphal scoliosis in that case you might actually have to go a little bit more medial and uh, that is a bit worrying uh, so the issue with uh, going to medial is that you might uh, go into the dural cuff and for that reason I will say that you do not attach anything to the uh, extension tubing. The extension tubing should be left open to the atmosphere. Till now we've had uh, three cases okay, over the period of around almost 12 years now and there are three cases where uh, we have seen uh, CSF so prevented uh, doing a total spinal and not very long back I've told this incidence about one of my uh, anesthesia colleague who wanted to learn lumbar plexus block from me and we taught that and the first one he did independently he got a CSF tap and first thing he came to me and said oh thank you for showing me that I would have had been in trouble because you actually have a total span for the first independent uh, lumbar plexus block you do that's it gone <laughs> your whole career might be affected by it uh, especially if you're in the UK so two important thing uh, always uh, mark out the uh, landmarks on the back of the patient especially uh, when you are uh, starting to do it uh, second thing and uh, never uh, try to attach anything to the extension tubing and third thing try to hit the transverse process okay once you hit the transverse process walk off it okay whether you walk off uh, sparely and fairly it should be able to glide off the transverse process you should not angle it too acutely okay try to see that you glide off easily uh, from it okay thank you guys